Fork Tales, a podcast that feeds the food and beverage world. Fork Tales is brought to you by Pavone Group and Vigor, a branding and marketing agency for restaurant, beverage, and hospitality brands. Learn more at vigorbranding.com. If you love what we're serving up, please give Fork Tales a five-star review on your podcast service of choice. Think of it as a tip for good service. Hey there, welcome to Fork Tales. I'm uh, Michael Pavone, and uh, I'm happy to really uh, get a chance to talk to a good friend of mine. Uh, today we have Andy Gellert here. He's a good friend I've known for and respected for a long, long time. Andy's the president of Gellert Global Group, one of the largest food importers in the world. Uh, they import more than 2,500 2, product lines from more than 60 countries. Andy, thank you so much for being here. Mike, always a pleasure. Always great seeing you, and nice seeing your, your smiling face, and I love hanging out with you. We're yeah. always have a lot of fun together. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if they if they have music for this in the beginning, you know, I was gonna I was gonna change up our, our Fork Tales music and uh, have a little. I don't like to brag about my, <laughs> my, 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 my 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 beautiful voice. Where you saw me on stage with Salt and Pepper a long time ago. You know? I hung I hung that up a long time ago. I gotta concentrate in the food business, Mike. I can't. Yeah. I can't just take my life away. Yeah. You know? A little Salt and Pepper in the beginning of this thing I gets us off and everything. And you know, the thing is, Andy, I, I have known you for a long time, but I love doing these interviews because. I always learn more. So it's like, I might have seen you over the years at these shows and get to hang out and, you know, have a drink together. But, you know, when you dig in a little deeper about the family business and about the food industry and, and all of that, it's just, I'm always blown away. And your, your company uh, and your family, which is the company, is absolutely amazing. So tell us a little bit about Gellert Global Group and well, what they do. Yeah, I mean, like next year we'll celebrate our 80th uh, birthday and we're very excited. And as I said, you know, I'm third generation, and uh, I, I, I live I live food. It's a, it's a passion of mine. I, I love all aspects of the food industry. Uh, and you know, like my grandfather started this in 1945, importing meats from Eastern Europe and seafood. And we've grown and got other lines of businesses in. We, you know, we're selling food service, retail, manufacturing, cruise line. We're now involved in, you know, thanks to YPO, I'm, I'm involved in a franchise business. <laughs> By the end of the year, we'll have 55 guys, thanks wow. to our good friend Dan Rowe. Yeah. We introduced him to our first one. And, uh, you know, we invest in food businesses, and it's just uh, – we're all about food. I tell everyone I hit my belly. It's this is R and D. This is R and D. That's fantastic. Now you know I, I know family owned, super important. I know you treat everyone like family because I've seen you around uh, customers, employees, the whole thing. But your dad, he is an older gentleman, but still very much involved in the business. Is that correct? I mean, eighty six. I mean, I, was, you know, I went to his house to play tennis at six o'clock in the morning today. We play with people from our company. He loves it like he's – my mom goes away for the summer. He's having – this summer is incredible. It's 86. Every – twice a week, he has people from the company come over and have dinner and just That's different awesome. groups of people, and and he loves what he does. It's 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 really it's really an honor to to, to work with him and, and watch him. He, he loves he loves his suppliers. We love our bankers. We love our, our employees. It's all about, you know – he, he's, all, he's all about people, and it's yeah. really great. I said this summer at the Fancy Food Show, he was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award, and it's such a good honor to see him up there and enjoying all the success of all we've done together. But, well, it, it's so well-deserved. He deserved that honor. The company's amazing, but you should give him a break. I mean, I think you, you put sneakers on him. I had, he had sneakers on in the booth to run around. I mean, you know. He loves, you know, listen, like I said, he works out before we play tennis in the morning, and he's all about the next activity and what we're doing next, so, you know. That's, that's fantastic. How many so how many members of the family are currently working in the company? So today we have my I have my sister, my brother, and my cousin in, in my generation, and my cousin who my other cousin who runs the Five Guy business, and then I have my father and my uncle. So there's you know the three six of us. You know that's great. And, and look, we're, you, we're getting ready for the third generation. Hopefully, we, you know there are nine kids in the next generation and. Hopefully one of them or two of them will come in and we're, we're excited. It's all about, you know, we love what we do and there's a lot to do. And, you know, some of these family businesses, you know, the family, you hear about them and they're fighting and they're not getting along. Mm -hmm. 
I think we've been successful because we keep growing and there's enough things that everyone can do and everyone brings value that no one's stepping each other's toes. We're all different, we, but we appreciate each other's opinion and listening to each other. I mean, we argue, but you know, we all we, we get it off our chest and we move forward. You know, we just go out and play tennis, right, and solve it over exactly. the we tennis court. On the court. We stop <laughs> on the court. So the kids are, are are they are they interested? Are they old enough? I don't know how old they are. Are They old enough to be getting so, close? You know, my daughter, my daughter is a social worker therapist. I don't think she's going to come in, you know. Um, but my you know my other two uh, potentially will come in. One mm-hmm. one probably more likely than the other. Others in the real estate industry, and then my sister's kids um, potentially were there, and my brother's kids are a little bit younger. So I definitely think at least three or four will come in for the next generation, but. In the meantime, we keep growing and getting bigger and, and looking at opportunities, and we have fun while, while we do it. That's awesome. Well, so uh, in, for, in your situation, I mean, we're, we're of a generation, you and I, I'll say that, like, did you did you have a choice or did you always know that this is what I'm going to do or I want to do it? Or did you did dad put a little pressure on you and say, hey, look, you know, you do I, your I, thing? <laughs> I did everything wrong in the family business. You know, they all say, go out and get outside experience. And I came right in. Uh-huh. And it was difficult. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you it was a piece of cake. And yeah. um, uh, my brother was a lot, you know, he went to business school. He went to law school. He worked in private banking, and then he came in. So uh, it, it, it made a lot of sense. My sister, the same thing. Uh, you know, I did everything wrong, but it's good to know. <laughs> it's good to do it because then you know, you're not going to repeat it. So yeah. uh, you know, my son, who, who, who definitely looks forward to maybe joining one day, says he, want, he wants to spend three or four years yeah. you know, outside and coming in. Well, you know, it, that's I had the same rule with my girls. I mean, I don't know that they'll ever want to come into. Why would anyone would go to an advertising agency or come into a marketing firm? But if they would, I said they had to work somewhere for two years and get one promotion. And thankfully, they've both been doing that. In fact, they've been doing it for a while now, so maybe they're not interested. So uh, they may have dodged the bullet, or maybe I have. But I, I just think our generation it was one of those things where you know, yeah, go do what you want to do, but you're coming into the company kind of thing. You know, uh, I started my own business. I didn't go in my dad's company, but I mean, it was one of those things where. Where I, I just think a lot of folks, it was just, I guess, different. Uh, now I think with, uh, I'll say with my daughters and probably your kids, like go out and do your thing. And if you're interested, talk to me. Don't you know? No, don't not talk to me about it. But you know, you don't no pressure that kind of thing. You know, it's just a little different. Yeah, you want it to happen organically. Yeah. And you know, listen, uh, he he comes around a lot of the meals and the family all gets together. And a lot of time is talking about work, so he's interested. And uh, you know, he spends weekends. He came to the fancy food show. They all came. They like to see what's going on. And uh, it's it's a fun business, so I think yeah. there's opportunities for them in the future if they want. But it, there's no pressure. We're growing. We have a lot of. We've done a great job of hiring a lot of outside, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, professionals to help us run the business. And mm-hmm. they don't have to come. We're we're doing well, and you know, they're all gonna, you know, they're they're all gonna enjoy the, from the fruitfuls of the business as 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 it gets bigger. But there's no obligation for them to come in. We like them to come in. But we don't want to make a rule if they have to come in. Yeah. But on that note, and we'll jump in more about the business, but on the family side, you mentioned earlier that we're both in YPO. And we both know that a lot of YPO businesses are family-owned businesses. And there's there, there are challenges, right, with being family-owned and led. I mean, you know, what, you know, can you talk a little bit about that? Listen, it, it's hard. Yeah. But, you know, I think – and thank God for, for YPO. It's been – to me, it's one of the best uh, – opportunities in my life. I really enjoyed all the people, particularly like yourself, and getting involved in the, in the food network and my, 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 my New Jersey forum. The, these guys are like, you know, are, are my board of directors and my own mm-hmm. personal board of directors. And they really helped me grow. And where, you know, where I was, I was being stubborn, they tell me to relax. Where I was not being aggressive enough, they pushed me. And it's just been a great environment for me to, to prosper as a leader because of YPL. That's great. Well, and I know your food and beverage forum or that group, and boy, you know, I can't believe you learned anything from them. So, <laughs> no, yeah. you guys have a group of uh, you guys have a a, a, a group of uh, of uh, cherished individuals. We got a great characters, group, and we yes, did it for over you know some of us back almost sixteen to eighteen years, and it's great. I, I love seeing the guys, and we don't, we try not to miss meetings. And yeah, it's cool, and we're, we're supportive of each other. Yeah, so. I've had a couple of them on here, so it's uh it's been great. They're they're uh, they're like the characters, that's for sure. So yeah, and you're, you mentioned your father got an award at Fancy Food. I was there at Fancy Food this year, and what a, it's a great honor. He's also a member of the New Jersey Business Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's listen. Uh, we it's not easy. I think we're 
We're the 11th largest privately held business in New Jersey. We're very yeah. proud of that. And, uh, we're, you know, it's, it, we work hard and he deserves to be uh, honored for what, what, what he's accomplished. Yeah. I mean, so as I was saying earlier, you know, I get to meet folks and get to see, you know, different folks at different shows. And I had, I, I mean, I knew you ran a great importing company, but I had no idea the size and scale. So, it, you know, on your vision is to be a part of every food experience. And, you know, well, I will say that sounds like a really, you know, audacious goal, right? But with your company, you kind of are. I mean, you're, you have you have you have you have a uh, 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 franchise. You have you, you import your frozen food. You have CPG. You have uh, privately. I mean, it's it's incredible. Can you talk a little bit about the breadth and the different companies within I mean, your organization? Exciting, and I think we've grown over the years through acquisitions. I think the last eighteen months, we made three acquisitions. We're probably closing on one in the next month and have two on the table that we're looking at. So growth is, uh, you know, we're always looking at mergers and acquisitions. And we like to say, listen, private equity, if you're a family business, you want to stay apart, you know, have, enjoy the ride, take some money off the table and join our family instead of private equity where they yeah. change your business up. And listen, you, you, if you want to cash out, you can always cash out, but if you want to, enjoy the ride a little bit longer and take some money off the table. We've been very successful about people wanting to join a family business. And ours is that we're like a very large family business. So we get a lot of opportunities to look at business deals. Yeah. And, you know, uh, your your, uh, passion for the business and your your love of people, uh, it sort of precedes you. Like I've always seen that about you, your energy. And it's not or it's not uh, it's not artificial. You do that. I, I've seen it. I've seen you at the booth when I'm standing, walking the shows and stuff. And it's uh, it's really kind of uh, really cool. And I'm sure that's a compliment to your father, and, and I'm sure your whole family's like that. But you do treat everybody like family, and I think that's uh, admirable. Yeah, listen, network is always is important to my father. I learned that from him early on, and being part of YPO, I, I love leveraging my network and not yeah. for myself, but helping people. Yeah, I, I liked investing in early stage CPGs and helping these young people and watching their passion and, you know, leading them to other opportunities. I love uh, putting two people together and let, let them prosper. It's, uh, it's really a, a pleasure of mine, you know, watching that happen. Yeah. Well, and that's, that leads to success, right? Yeah. Really help people pure, out. Yeah, yeah it's, it, absolutely. So, and I will say, uh, you know, I've been informed with you and you were a treasure and valuable as all get out and the amount of people, you know, and, and the connections you have are second to none. Well, and, you know, we, I, we do have a good friend in LA who likes <laughs> to compare my good friend, our good friend, Clara, Probably knows one more than I do. Well, heard I I would always keep score when we'd be talking, like who knew who or who knew the other person better or whatever else. But I will say, uh, I'm excited for you to be on here because I know my podcast now will be I'll rival the 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 football games, you know, the upcoming football games for 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 viewership because because of you. So I I I just I appreciate that. So, but but back on companies, you you have Frozen, you have CPG. Can you can you talk a little bit about the different types of of, uh, yes, frozen fruits, frozen vegetables. You know, we just actually a few years ago we invested in a company called Cafe Spice. I made him join YPO, <laughs> and they make ethnic meals. Um, I just, you know, we did the, the Bloomberg of Food, the Food Institute. Yep. We made a minority investment in there. Uh, we're, you know, f- um, we do a lot of different retail, f- private label manufacturing. We're just trying to leverage all the all, everything on a plate. Mm-hmm. Look at, you know, we're. We're looking at an olive business, a rice business. There's so many opportunities out there. We just want to add on to our great team here. We, we got great people. Uh, we have great salespeople, great buyers, and you know finance. And we just we can do some more. So we're looking mm-hmm. for more opportunities. That's great. Do you need an ad agency? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not our own brand. We do have some brands that we that are ours, and we bought we bought two brands from. Uh, from UNFI Mountain Vicos that was owned by UNFI and mm-hmm. Sonoma Cheese. So we mm-hmm. do we do work in our brand. So That's we, awesome. you know, and we have a marketing department. We gotta get you more engaged, Mike. There you I'm, go. I'm, oh, hey, I'm always here for that. That's awesome. We're bringing your Philly cheesesteak while we'll have a meeting. You, know? you got it. Hey, that's done. No, no, no problem there. So when you're, when you're building and you're always looking for these new, new products or companies, uh, you know, what, when you want to import them, what, what factors are you looking at? Like, I mean, obviously you, you need a lot of things, or, but you're in so many different places. What, what is it that you're, that you're kind of like, uh, what's on your checklist at the top of the checklist? So, 
we want to look at something that makes sense. So if, if you know, we love the the old math, one plus one equals four. So we want to find efficiencies. Maybe they're doing the same thing we are, but they have a big they have a big finance team that we don't really need going forward. Or maybe they're in one segment of the business where we're not in. Mm -hmm. So we try to really identify where we can do the math where one plus one equals four and five. Uh, right. Uh, you know, we don't want to. It doesn't a copycat doesn't really help sometimes. But if they have a you know a, a big a big staff and there's some redundancy there, then mm -hmm. it makes sense. Otherwise, it could be a whole new field that could we can add to our, our already you know deep bench of, of products that we do. So we don't have a playlist of what we're looking for. We just look at different opportunities and see if they make sense. I mean, like just like building a network. We love looking at decks and looking at opportunities of mm -hmm. why are companies for sale, why aren't they aren't, and you know. But a lot of times we're like, listen, this is going to go to private equity. We're not going to even bid because we know we'll right. be blown out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Now that makes that makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, obviously, and you know, I kind of had this philosophy as well in the business. It's like you're opportunistic. You know, you're not saying I'm looking for this exact thing. It has to be this big. That cut. You know, that, that category doing that thing. It's sort of like. Oh, here's an opportunity. Hmm, this fits, or no, it doesn't fit. Or hey, yeah. this can enhance that. And if we do this, maybe we can go here. And so I've always looked at that. It's kind of fun to do it that way. I kind of always do that way. You like you like yeah. you know, be looking under the under the rug and see what's there. And, yeah. And, and and put that puzzle together because, like I said, a big company that's you know a competitor of mine, it's going to go for a lot more for private equity. Well, I'm not, I don't even want to play in that area. I, I'm right. I don't have private equity money where I could afford to or afford to strike out. I, mm -hmm. I want to make sure these are successful acquisitions and they fit in the, in, in the mold. So, Yeah, and you make a, a really good point because we've seen, you know, I'll say, and I'm, I know you've seen for sure, but in my business with CPG uh, and in the restaurant side, pe private equity will come in and they, and I'm not going to say they don't care if they fail, but they, they know it's a numbers game. They know that all aren't going to pan out. So they make these investments and then they, they do their, their, their they, they apply their playbook. And then, you know, if they're, they're, it's like baseball, if they, they hit three out of, uh, if they hit three out of 10, they feel like they've done something and, and you probably have financially, but the, the other seven are just left to the wayside. Exactly. And, they, and they've, you know, they, they can afford to do that. We really yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. And no, we don't want to, we don't want to lose direction. I mean, Listen, we like you know, we're very big and we're happy where we are, but we're not in a goal to rush to get to two billion. Right. We're gonna get there smart, and if it means paring down and skew rationalization to be more profitable, all the better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself doing that a lot? Do you do you have to go in there and, and uh, do skew rationalization all, or all the time? Yeah, all the time. We really you know skew ras customer rationalization. Yeah. And we'll bundle a bunch of customers and give them to a bigger customer just to make sure yeah. our warehouse is more efficient. It's really all about efficiency. I mean, yeah. as you get bigger, you can be more efficient, and but you have to be diligent and skew rationalization, customer rationalization, people rational, you know, rationalization as yep. well. You know, it's important. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's such a it's such an interesting point because I think. You know, I, and I'll say, I'll say in my own experience, you know, I've, in our holding company, we have several different marketing companies and I'm always afraid to let customers go like, oh, no, we can do it for them. Sometimes it's not good business, right? And sometimes yeah. you have to make those tough decisions and, you know, it's, it's hard to let employees go, but it's, it's hard for you to let, or I'll say for me to let a piece of business go, a paying yeah. customer. Well, it's, you know, you don't like, you know, same thing, but, but you got to look at it like, you know, you still have another 300 other employees out right. there that, you want to do for the better of the, of the group. Right. So that's right. It makes sense to let someone go or let a customer go in order to be more efficient for everyone else. So yeah. it, it's hard. And initially it's hard, but over time you realize it's a better decision and uh, to be, you know, to be more efficient and just try. Absolutely. So, I mean, one of the things that, you know, we have the two agencies, we have Quench, we have, uh, uh, which is CPG food and beverage. We have uh, a, Var a Vigor, which is uh, uh, restaurant marketing. Uh, you, you, you cover them all because you're in franchise with five guys. You're in, you know, in the CPG world. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's sort of like, it's hard to keep track of everything. How do you manage it all? I mean, I know you have different folks, but you're sitting up there. Are you just pulling up a different P and L for each of these business units every two days or. I mean, we're on basically a lot of these zoom calls and just listening in. And, uh, we just had one a few minutes ago, you know, we do a lot of nut and, and dried fruit business and we're working on getting bigger in the bakery in the, in the supermarket. So mm -hmm. how could we be, you know, and, and we sat down today and we talked about all of our items. And they all fit in the bakery, but we're selling very little of the bakery. So it's an untapped market, and mm -hmm. that gets everyone excited. And we sit down and throw, th 
things at the wall and see what sticks. That's great. And that's kind of fun. Like we just said, hey, you know, we do this item. This would be good for. And I just, I love sitting in these meetings and just, you know, throwing out ideas. That's great. That's great. Very cool. Well, I know at, at Quench, you know, w- the CPG side, we, we would do uh, to learn, to understand the, the industry. I, you know, we, we started the, the agency in food and beverage. It's like, well, it's, you can't just say you do advertising and marketing food and beverage. You have to have an expertise. So we went out and hired people from the CPG world. But then what we did was we, we created a food and beverage trench just to learn what was going on, right? And the first year, we've done them for over 15 years. Uh, you know, you've probably seen me speak on them at, yeah, at different you events. Yeah, great job. I love hearing you at the updates on the white. PO conferences and you really got a pulse of what's going on in the industry. Yeah, so we we would do that. Just we did it actually just for our own edification, just to learn. And then when we did it, we said, well, let's let's just give these away. So we do them every year. We give them away. Fast companies written about them and all that. Do you use trends uh, for your business to for like that next big thing, or is it more of really just looking at the pieces and moving things around on the board? We look at trends. We look at pieces. We you know we a lot of our a lot of our supply uh, customers say. We like this item. Can you go out and find it for us? And we got people or, you know, in, in some cases we do a lot of business. Some of our, our customers say, here's an item, you know, here's a supplier. We, you know, you're, you're a great importer. We want you to import it for us. So it, it just because we're a trusted supplier, we're good at logistics, they actually given us business to, to handle, and it's, it's exciting. And then we take that business and look at other opportunities as well. How is there anything? Are you doing anything in the beverage side? Or is it mostly all just food? No, I mean we the beverage side we have. So we Cipriani, you know the. the mm-hmm. So we we handle all their CPG items. Okay. So they make a the Bellini mix, mm-hmm. non alcoholic Bellini. So we're slowly getting it. That's our beverage, and you know we'll see where that takes us. But that's new space for us, and uh, we're doing it on the retail side now. We're looking to try to. Listen, all the, the beverage distributors we don't really touch on, so mm-hmm. we're getting we're getting a, a handle of that business yeah. as well. So that's the only part of beverage. You know, I'm an investor in a few CPG like Olipop and Lemon mm-hmm. Perfect, uh, a few others, but um, but not. I think that's a tough space, but I think we're we're getting our feet wet with this Tripiani line. So uh, that's interesting. That you're with Lemon Perfect. We just took over their space in Atlanta. Their headquartered oh, really? in Atlanta, yeah, and we just took over their space. They went uh, they went all virtual, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yanni went to Cornell with me. Yeah. Oh, is you know, that right? Yeah. He's a, you should get him on your podcast. I've met him. He's a great that guy. guy. He's Mr. Energy. It was oh my his gosh. birthday this week. So yeah, I just, is that right? I will reach I out to him. He, yeah. He, I, he, we, you can, you can appreciate this, Andy. You know me pretty well. So I'm going to, I was going to sublease his, his office, right? So, you know, it's a like real estate deal. Right? I'm going to sublease it. We're going to put, the, we're going to move from one, uh, one office to a, this other office. So I talked to him and he was like, he was going 180 miles an hour. And it was great and all that. And I was like, I really like this guy. And I'm like. He's an infectious person. Yeah. He's- and I'm like, you know, Yanni, I said, hey, if you want, I mean, I'll, I'll do the deal here with you. But if you want to stay, like, you know, I mean, your energy and what you're, you're in the beverage, that's what we do. I mean, you can stay, you know, like if you have meetings here and like your, if your people come in, like it's a big enough space for all of us. I'm not asking for anything on the other side. I'll, you can stay. I mean, I just, I, I thought energy, you know, creates more energy. So, and we talked about that, but then that's he was like, so you know, funny. you know, that guy, Isn't that I crazy? Him at Expo West and it, he had a small little table yep. and I'm like, wow, this guy's, this guy's a firecracker. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm supporting you. And That's awesome. It's a great story. That's very cool. That's the, and it goes to show you know everybody. That's amazing to me. Amazing. That's, it's funny. Take that, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll make sure we tell her that. So, all right, now I'm going to bring up something, I guess, negative or whatever, but inflation. Inflation is, all, you know, is, it affects every industry, special it's, food. It's, you know. Yeah. How, how much of an impact has that had on you guys? Listen, we're imported products. So our products are expensive already. And so- it's tough. We have to find, you know, you know, find other opportunities. That's why we invested in this cafe spice that makes meals to maybe make things more efficient for more of our customers and look at other opportunities. Maybe source something that's coming from Europe, getting it from South America, mm-hmm. and, and and we're always looking for ways to, to to skin. We started importing French fries from Belgium to the East Coast because it's it's more effective. And looking at opportunities like that, and now we're looking at opportunities in India. And you always have to turn over rocks, look for more opportunities. It's scary, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it's it, you know the, it's all the news, the the price inflation, 
So we're always looking for newer opportunities to try to make things better for our customers. And uh, being a global, you know, accessing globally with conflict and things like that. I mean, obviously that's affecting everything. I mean, are you having, are you, are you, are you, is, there, is there ever a chance where, well, one area of the business is sort of shut down or, hey, we can't get this from there or is, yeah, is that? things happen all the time. I mean, you know, when, 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 when the Ukraine war first started, you know, it was, it was a big factor because it happened, oh, Europe was tough and, then when there was a, a big problem with freight from the from from Asia, supply chain issues from COVID. I mean, we we've seen them all, Mike. Crazy. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to hard. And now there's an impending dock strike mm-hmm. that's going to come. So that's going to affect from Maine that. all the way to Texas, and yeah. that's really making us very nervous and oh, our yeah. customers nervous. So, but we wow. you know we do the best we can, and we keep fighting every day. You know, get up. <laughs> Get up and play some tennis. You know? That's what I was going to say. You get to play tennis and smile and have a positive attitude. And that's have the secret sauce. Attitude. You just got to, you know. You know, and I, I do love because every time I talk, I think, I think you always say, yeah, I played tennis with my dad this morning. And, you know, family businesses, there's so many family businesses that end up like not talking to each other. And you hear all the the, the generational strife or the the falling apart. The fact that you, you you still hang with your dad. My dad was my best friend. So I that's just so near and dear to me. It's incredible. I think that's well, so today awesome. Little, today I was a little upset with him. I showed up at his house at 10 to 6, pouring rain, and the, the match was canceled. So I don't oh. wake up for nothing. Oh, boy. I'm a little annoyed. But that doesn't happen <laughs> that often. So. I hope you don't ever let him win. Well, I'm, a, I'm his partner. He doesn't okay. move very well, and uh, people, no one's allowed to drop shot him. You know, <laughs> you get everyone starts booing whoever drops shot. Him. <laughs> It awesome. was an accident, but like, no, you know, <laughs> he's got a bunch of rules. You know? oh, that's awesome. It's, it's, it's his own tennis game, right? It's, it's his, his own, own tennis game. It's his own tennis game. That's fantastic. So if I if I may ask, and I know if you, something you can't say, that's fine, but what, what's next for Gellert Global? I mean, what is anything new on the horizon, anything exciting well, you can talk about? Yeah, more opportunities. You know, we, 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 like, we, we have such a great team. We have such great suppliers, such great employees, such great customers. We just want to keep doing what we're doing and look for more opportunities. And if it makes sense to, to make an acquisition, we're going to do it. And uh, uh, it's it's fun, you know. I mean, you know, just look at my cousin and the five guys. We were like 12 five guys. Now this year, by the end of the year, we'll have 100. That's and awesome. It's just uh, opportunistic and good people and, and, and growth to move forward. Yeah. And, and Dan Rowe, as you mentioned, he's a king of a guy. And he, yeah. he was actually on the podcast and he he's, he's fantastic. So that, that's good company right there. Yeah. So. yeah. We were at a YPO event and he's like, and we we're looking, my cousin at the time had a bunch of Cinnabons uh-huh. and we we're looking for a second concept and we we're at a YPO in DC. He's like, Andy, come try this concept. And I took a bite of the five guy burger. I'm like, this is like a like the, the when you taste a uh, Cinnabon for the first time, right? Wow factor. Yeah, I called my cousin, and the next thing we know, you know, we're down there <laughs> signing the deal. So it was, that's it, awesome. It, it's been a great journey. Yeah, fantastic, very cool. All right, so now I, I asked this question. I have one last question. All right, and this is probably well, I don't know if it'll be easy for you, but it's not like you have to say you you can't say five guys. So I just have to throw that out there. So, but if you have one final meal, what would you eat? And why? And I'm going to say this too. That's and, the hardest and, thing. I and who know, with? I want to know who I, with. It's impo- That's like the hardest question anyone can ever ask me. I, <laughs> I, I love like, it, it's like, we, I, I think I told you before we started, I was at the US Open with my yeah. son and my wife. And there's so much food options. I had a headache. I couldn't decide <laughs> what to get. Would I get the, the Korean bowl or the Pat <laughs> steak sandwich or, or the fancy chicken with truffles, the dumplings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I almost get a headache. I can't even decide. So that's, uh, it's impossible. I just, I love eating. I love food experiences. I love being surprised. I like going to a chef and say, just surprise me. Yeah. Don't even, just give me what you, you, you do best and let me try it. And, and um, you know, I, it's really, I can't, I, there's not one meal that I have to have. I, yeah. I, I, I love a good sandwich. I love a good burger. I got good steak. I like Italian, French, Spanish yep. food, everything. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I'm the same way. I'm lucky I can eat anything. Like I don't get nothing. I don't have any allergies. I don't get sick. But, uh, you know, if I have a go-to at a certain thing at a certain place, I will, I'll have a go, my go-to. But nine out of ten times when I go to a restaurant, like whatever the chef wants to make, because yeah. I figured he's going to put his heart and soul in it, right? If, it's, if I'm asking him his opinion. Yeah, if, 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 if they put it on the menu yeah. and they're, they're behind it, I, I would take their recognition and set it something I really want. So Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You nailed it. And I love the fact you, you mentioned the U.S. Open, and there was somebody there at the U.S. Open that had better seats than you, which was your? 
my father. Yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Andy, I, I, you know, I love being with you. I love talking to you and I appreciate your time. Uh, just thank you so much for being on Fork. Well, Mike, first of all, congratulations to you and the organization you built. And you've always been, you're always smiling too. I mean, that's, I, that's why we like each other so yeah. much. We're always, we're always smiling. have a good time. And <laughs> your trends are amazing. And really, I, re- I really enjoyed seeing you and doing this with yourself. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. All right.